um, you're on live. Hi, Stan Chow. Good afternoon. It's good morning here in New York. It's, um, it's, it's a warm afternoon here in Manchester. Yeah, we're warm here too. We've been warm for like the last four days. Uh, it's a hundred and something almost in Fahrenheit. And you're like, what over there? Well, we're like, we're like 30 uh, degrees Celsius, which is pretty much the same. Pretty know? much the same, yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's uh, hunker down and get some work done. I know you're a busy guy, and all I can say is I look forward very much on my Instagram feed and my son's Instagram feed, which I manage, to see your stuff every now and again. It always makes me happy. Uh -huh, thank you. Which, which is not necessarily the purpose of art, but it's definitely a purpose, one of the main purposes of art for me. Especially, I mean, in the world as it is now with so much stress, every time you look at the news or social media, there's something really disturbing. It's Yours is like a good, calming, happy effect. I'm pleased I can do that, yeah. Yes, well, I wanted to ask about parents and children, because uh, this is going to be on my uh, Bees and Honey YouTube channel, but also on my son's Theorem channel, okay. which uh, I give you a lot of credit for having me conceptualize. Oh, thank you. Just based on your portrait of him, which I'm so happy you took the time to do, and uh, the font you used for his name, which I wow. then decided to use as his logo, Theorem. So my first question is, You've said your parents encouraged you, your artistic inclinations. How long ago, uh, how, well, how did they do that? How would you say that they encouraged you as a child? Well, they encouraged me by, by always by, um, buying me um, art, art materials and stuff, you know. Um, they, you know, they, they, they knew, like, you know, when they worked in a, a, a chippy, a Chinese takeaway, that, like, that wasn't going to be my life. That was, that was their intention, you mean, know. The intention was that like I better m m myself really, and um, and they've yeah they've always you know they never pushed me to do something I didn't want to do. They knew I was good at art, so they always encouraged it. You know, they, I mean like they, when I was younger, they always provided me pe pen and paper. It was, it was always there. You mean know, and, um, and and this all, what you did in your this what you did to amuse yourself. Yeah, pretty much so. Yeah, and like and then but then it became part part of me really. You know. It's something I just did. It wasn't like something that I um, I needed to do. It was just something. It's like people that eat and people like to watch TV. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, and this is something I did. You know, I watched TV. I ate. I did other things, but I also drew pictures, and that was just you know that was just instilled in me from a very young age, really. Right. So as you speak, you know, new questions are coming into my head. So I might go a little bit off script and just ask That's you. Fine. Yeah. So, you know, we're growing up in the tech time. We couldn't have done this interview at the time you were growing up and drawing with your pens and your paints and stuff like that. And I have a real challenge to give the paints to my son, give him yeah. the things to draw with, and still deal with the iPad, the iPhone, and all the videos and technology that he sees around. How do you deal with your own kids with that? And Well, well we don't. It's, um, it's quite easy, really. Because we give them everything, see, like they have the iPads. My kids love iPads, but, mm -hmm. but there's always there's always uh, a cupboard with paper and pens and art materials and stuff. You know, there's always there's it's always there. You know, and sometimes the iPad runs out of batteries. Right. So when you say, look, it's run out of batteries. Just give it a few hours to charge. In that time, <laughs> you can draw pictures. Yes, you know, because they always need something to do. You see, they, they you know, kids always want something to do. Yeah. And, and like, but 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 then there's times when they completely forget about the iPad, and as right. soon, the minute they wake up, they they the drawing whilst they're um, having breakfast and stuff. It's, well, um, that that is true. Thank God it runs out of the battery from time to time. Oh my God. Yeah. Um. I mean, from what I've heard, all the big tech guys don't allow their kids technology, and you know, it's part of a. Uh, the Waldorf school system not to have uh, technology and stuff. But, you know, I really believe it's something we cannot get away from in the future. And I think the children will, in fact, be handicapped if they don't have some technology in their oh, life. Absolutely, yeah. No, no, that, that, I totally believe that, you know. And um, and I feel like, yeah, because because technology is moving that way, they, they need to learn now. Yeah. 
yeah. so, so that is, so they can keep up with everyone else, basically, you know. Exactly, no child left behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Right. How long ago did your parents die? Oh, I'm a fool. My mother died about 14 years ago now, and my dad mm -hmm. died about 10, 11 years ago. I can never remember the actual dates, but, you know. A, a while. And how do you see yourself in them? I mean, you're doing something completely different from what they did, but there must be some character traits, some things about how they raised you that are still a part of you, in spite of the different professions you've engaged in. It, it, it might sound like a cliche, but, but it's hard work, really. I yes. mean, I, yes. yeah, it's, um, I mean, don't get, don't get me wrong, is that I was always told I was lazy. You know, I know I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> It's like I'm I'm a lazy, hardworking person. You mean? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I probably work harder than any other artist I know. Totally, totally. Yeah. I'll but, get back to that in terms of tech when you're done. But but compared to compared to my parents, you mean they 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 they, they work from the morning the minute they woke up until the, they went to bed sleep. You see, when you open right. when you open a, a a food place, you have to you know, and it's a family run business. Mm -hmm. You know they, you know they can't really, they couldn't really afford to employ too many people. They have to run it themselves. You know. Right, right. Like, maybe that's the, another trait. Is I guess it, it's um, is is the fact that they're always hands on. They they, they were too kind of they're so protective of their own business that they that they didn't let anyone else run it for them. They could have done that, I guess. And yeah. for me, yeah, like I'm pretty hands on in terms of I'm quite I'm quite um, um you know protective of, of what I do and. Yeah. And even when I have like people working for me, I'm still I still oversee and quite quite overpowering really in in the, in that aspect. Right. Well, I think that's important, especially because of your uh, particular style. I suppose you use technology, yes, but at the end of the day, it's your own hand in the work. I mean, I was thinking about a programmer that I knew a while back, and he said to me, he went to Cornell, and he said one of his professors always taught him in in coding class that the best programmers are lazy because sometimes the less you do the better off the end product is maybe that's the case you know, you know. it but, depends um, you know, yeah you have to know when to be lazy and you have to know when to like really dig in well, well don't get me wrong what i do know is that when it comes to working on my artwork i'm i'm pretty hard working i think i think it's the right. rest of my life that i'm pretty lazy at basically but, but that's right, right. more time to work on work as an artist basically you know and you said uh Around the age of five or six, I read this in another interview you had, that you knew you would be an artist. Do you see your children as exhibiting signs of going in that direction, or is it too early to tell? Do they say things like, I want to be a this, or I want to do a that? Oh, yeah, they, they, they say they want to be a, you know, it changes every week at the moment for them. But, <laughs> yeah. But, 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 uh, but at the same time, they still draw, you mean, know, they're both... Both my kids, like Winnie, who's nine, and Pearl, who's six, they're both showing kind of signs of being very creative, basically, you know. Yes. Uh, well, it's in the genetics, you know. I mean, I really am a big advocate for letting kids show you the direction they want to go in life and just allowing them to yeah. unfold. Yeah, no, we, we, yeah, we don't push them at all, to, to be honest with you. Like, we, 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 we give them as many choices as possible. Mm -hmm. We allow them to kind of... Um, you know, I guess we steer them, you know, but we don't kind of, um, right. we don't tell them you have to draw, you have to do this. <laughs> you know, that's that's, that's something we're kind of very anti, you know, we're not, we're not, even though I'm Chinese, I'm not a tiger, tiger parent, right. you know. Well, I think our generation as parents are so much more relaxed than the previous generation, you know. One of my friends is like, the guaranteed way to make him a banker is to tell him he has to be an artist. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is what role does your wife and the mother of your kids play in uh in your creative life like i i'm not sure what what does she do besides raise the kids you know i don't really know her oh she oh, well, she's a photographer you know what i mean and she huh. takes, and she takes um you know she mainly takes portraits and stuff you know what i mean she works with like the, the newspapers up in in england you know right and yeah she's quite busy too but, she, but right. yeah, she's probably she probably, yeah, she is probably 60% ch childcare for her and, and 40% right. like, work, like working, basically. Well, thank God for her is all I can oh, say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, to I'm so grateful, you mean, uh, you know, but, but, but this is, you see, like, um, like, like, her involvement in, like, like, 
when when she was pregnant, that's when it kickstarted for me in terms of right. I've got to kind of, I've got to kind of uh, up, up it a bit, up my game because yeah. I was cruising. Yeah. You know, I was you know I was I was living a very kind of comfortable life, just enjoying life basically, going out, partying, etc. You know, right. Um, but was wasn't really making any, that much money. But then when she became pregnant, it's like right. That's when I've got to start working harder, roof over their heads. I don't want to have. I don't want to give her any pressure in having to find work. You see, right, you know, right. Even though, even though she wants to work, that's there's there's um yes. That, that's that's the that's the brilliant thing. You know, she's so ambitious anyway. Yes. And um, but but the the thing is, like, I I I I work extra hard so she doesn't have to. You know, you know. That's that's the way I look at it. Anyway, that's you know. a beautiful, beautiful thing, and I think the healthy relationship understands how much work being a good mother is, and how important that is for a child to grow up in a healthy environment. But but also a good woman understands that she has to do her own work too. So okay. you found yourself a good woman. Yeah, she's don't get me wrong. She's frustrated in the fact that she probably does more childcare than she does actually work. You know, I mean? uh, so am I. Yeah. We all are. But you know what? The time will pass. Yes, no, well, no, we're, 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 we're discovering this, that like, um, as the older the children are getting, there's, there's more time, Yeah. you know, like, like for, for her to kind of do more stuff. Work, yeah. One of these days when I meet her, I'll see what she's up to and have a discussion because, I mean, there's really a lot of respect for the woman behind a great artist as well. Uh, sometimes they fall in the shadows, but everyone should know that they're important. Oh, absolutely, um, yeah. The fourth question I already mentioned at the start of the interview that your portrait of my son inspired me to get the image out virally. And I put it not on a wall as a poster, which would have been the easy thing to do, but I put it on his t-shirt and I put it on his dad's t-shirt and I put it on my t-shirt. And so we walk around with the portrait of our son. I mean, it's a little silly, but you know, we love him and people love the work and they comment on it. and. Uh, I just like the idea of using uh, everyday items to celebrate our our family and our children and our love for him. Um, have other creative people told you that your work inspired them in some way? Oh, no, I, I get a lot of emails like that. You know, it's like um, I mean, the, the, there's there's people who 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 from how I like from my interviews that I read is like they they, they quit their full time jobs. And like I'm right, I'm gonna go freelance. You know, purely from from me kind of saying, well, you know, that's this is all I, I ever did. You, you know, right, I, I, right, right. I've, I've never had a full time job. I just focused on on the, this one goal of right. your picture. You see, and you can't. And sometimes to become successful, you can't split the two. You see, you know, no, you can't, no, no. You, you can't just have well, two you know, masters. Yeah. And like, well, I know I can't anyway. I mean, if if I was working part time somewhere else, I wouldn't be. There would be no success in terms of the, in my art career, as far as I'm concerned. Right. I, I need all. I mean, like, I need. I mean, I, I wake up. I, I eat, sleep, and drink art and illustrations. So, you know, so so whilst you're working on something else, there isn't time for that for that thinking energy. You know, and 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 I tell a lot of people that I tell a lot of students where like, you know, when you when you I know you probably when you quit college if you want to make it you might have to kind of move back home with your parents because you're not going to make money at the start but but you know but if if your parents are happy to look after you for a few years so you right. can you can actually start um c c creating and and building your portfolio mm -hmm. because you won't be able to do that if you got if you have another job you see right i mean getting back to the lazy stuff i think it was George Sand, who said, "It takes a lot of time doing nothing to be a genius." <laughs> so it comes back to you working for yourself. You need, even if you're doing "quote unquote" nothing, that time, that creative time, is percolating stuff up. So when it's time to work, you you get it all out. Anyways, I, I, think, I, I think I think that's a philosophical answer to to actually like like to um to uh. You know, just to kind of explain his that he is lazy and like right, I'm gonna think of something to kind of like back up his um right. back up his laziness basically. <laughs> no, well, it, it, I mean it's all about self actualization, and 
by seeing other people do what you believe you can do, you help yourself become who you want to be. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, thanks for being one of the shining lights in <laughs> the art field or the industry or whatever you want to call it. So what's your creative process like? I mean, how do you work? Uh, do you have a routine? What are the tools that you use? Stuff like that. This is from my own channel now. Theoretically, we've switched to the more adult content. Okay, yeah. um, it, well, it, oh, yeah, I kind of work out how I am. It's different for every every commission you get, you get asked, obviously. You know, okay. So, um, because I mainly draw portraits, I mean, what I normally do with portraits is, is is find as many images of that person as I possibly can. You know, I'll, I'll if they've got like like videos as well. You mean you you feel you have to know the person to be able to kind of successfully uh, do a decent portrait. So so, so so there's a lot of um. There's, yeah, there's a lot of research involved, actually, you know, even I mean, a lot of people just assume here's one photograph and draw a picture from that. I can, but it won't be as good. If I have lots of photographs of that person from different angles, getting to know them, knowing their personality, doing their videos, it makes it easier for me to be able to kind of produce a better portrait, basically. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. I mean, I imagine whether you're using a paintbrush or a program, it's a yeah. similar process. Yeah. So I know you've been watching uh, England versus whoever they were recently. Did oh, they win? Columbia. It was Colombia last night. It was Colombia. Did they win or did they lose? Oh, England won, just yeah. barely. Barely on penalties, yeah. Right, and then you like so you like soccer. What else do you do in your uh, in your off time? I like soccer. I I, I, I used to DJ, so so uh, you know I listen to as much music as I possibly can. I buy lots, of, still still buy vinyl. And I'm wow. a quite a, quite a big vinyl collector, and I just watch movies. That's pretty much and look after my kids. I right. kind of condense my life to, to uh, watching soccer, drawing pictures, listening this to music, is. watching films, and spending time with my family. That's pretty. There's not much kind of not much else fits in uh, like around that really. Well, if you ask me, that's a lot already. I mean. <laughs> The music stuff, I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to introduce you to this German artist, but he is still collecting vinyl as well. He spins parties. I mean, part of his art is basically music. I'll email the two of you and see if you can get together at some point. Uh, what are your favorite things to do in Manchester? You, I guess you just answered that. That's pretty much what you're up to these days well, in terms. Well, no, because Manchester is a, is a, is a grow, is, it's the quickest growing city in Europe, as far as I can, as far as people have been telling me anyway. And uh -huh. you can see that, like whilst I'm going to work every day, there's new buildings, like you know, uh, popping up every day, and there's roads you just don't recognise anymore because of, right. of the new of the new architecture. So, so, so what I, what I'll try and do is like try and try and visit as many new restaurants because because that's um, that's something that's popping up. You know, you have new ones every, every open every, every weekend. Wow, and it's a pretty multicultural place, right? I believe so. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I mean, like, the, the, there's one, there's one um, study that they made that, that like, and there's more languages spoken in Manchester than there is in the whole of the rest of the wow, world. Wow! 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 So yeah, wow. so that's yeah, it's pretty, pretty multicultural. Yeah. Yeah. In that sense, you know, I should have asked this question earlier, but have you ever thought that your work has correlations between traditional Chinese paintings? I mean. I'm not sure if you know much of that work, but has anyone ever mentioned that to you, just it, as an offside? It, it, it probably has. Like you know, I mean, like, like when I was when I was younger, I used to you know I used to watch loads of manga manga cartoons and stuff like that, and and I was exposed to lots of like um, you know uh, Chinese comic books and stuff. Right. I mean, that's. I mean, I, I would have sub subconsciously absorbed all that stuff, you know. Right. But, but what I find really weird is. Is just like I'm not being able to sell it back to the East, you know. Even well, they're though, not into it. Not into it at all. No, I've, 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 I had a had an agent in China for for a bit, and um, absolutely nada, you know. So, so, that's, so that surprised me, you know. Okay, well, I think this is how I would handle that situation as your agent because I think there are people who would be interested. A lot of these uh, Instagram super wealthy. Uh, art collecting, fashion hoarding 
I'm sure some of these women would love to have their portrait done. One yeah. woman I just saw a video of, her name is Jamie Chua. Chua, yeah. I think, she's in Singapore. Oh. And I, I'm gonna send her a message on Instagram. She probably gets a thousand messages. She has like thousands of followers. She's basically the Kardashian of the East. Oh, wow. And I think she would be a great person <laughs> to like your stuff. And I'm, I'll send you a video when we get offline as well. I mean, she's amazing. I would like to not like her. I would like to think she's dumb. <laughs> when you see her in an interview, she is just on. This girl is smart as a button. And one of her lines was like, well, you know, I'm not interested in getting married. And I'm like, no, why would you? <laughs> <laughs> super beautiful, super smart, super wealthy. She doesn't need a husband. She's got everything. Anyways, um, getting back to the music. You said you're an avid vinyl collector. And this came out of your early days being a DJ. So what sort of music did you spin back in the 1990s? And what do you listen to today? Like when you um, were, what did you play? Well, well everything, you know, well, like um, I, I kind of, I used to have a, a weekly uh, club night uh, and, and we literally played everything from like Britney Spears, Metallica, to Beastie Boys, to Apex Twin. It, it, it was like, it was, it was kind of like, um, I started out kind of like at the Napster age when, um, when when people stop li when genres stop becoming genres and everyone starts to listen to like um everything you know but back in the day it was like people who like hip-hop music only like hip-hop music people like heavy metal only like heavy metal but when right, right right when napster happened you could you could tell people were just downloading everything you know and that's when music kind of literally became music became music there was no genres anymore you know it, you were allowed to like slayer and you're allowed to like you know uh, yeah. Snoop Dogg or you know and um and we kind of uh, tapped into that and and our club night was was being as eclectic as possible by by no having no genres really well that's funny you said that i was talking to a music guy yesterday a millennial and yeah. he was saying that the rappers have adopted rock and we know that rock adopted rap a while back. So it, it's true, that genre swapping thing even happened between the musicians. Yeah. Funny. And, uh, and I think, yeah, well, we, def we definitely kind of like, like in the late nineties, that was the kind of, um, you know, we, we, we got away with it. But, but I'll tell you in the mid, mid early nineties, house was just house, you know, funk nights, funk, were funk nights, you know. And right, 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 right. They were all kind of like pigeonholed where we, we kind of broke the mold a bit really. Right. But, I haven't said that the music I prefer to listen to is kind of 70s stuff, really. I mean, 70s psychedelic rock, funk and soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, my, that's my bag, really. But well, I know, but now we're showing our age in some yeah. ways because uh, that's the time I grew up as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to a fashion question. You know, if I had really organized this interview, it would somehow flow that I would talk about fashion in one section, but I keep going back and forth because I have these questions in front of me. Anyway. The first time I saw your work was in the context of fashion. And I remember asking Louisa St. Pierre of BA Reps if she had an illustrator with a style like this. And she looked at the work and she was like, that's my artist. <laughs> I mean, I, for me, it was a, one of those synchronicity moments in life where you're like, yes, I got it. <laughs> and I mean, at the time I wasn't making so much money, but I was so happy to find you and engage with you and to work with you. It was a happy day in my life. So do you still work in that style of the fashion uh, girls or is your current portrait style uh, more what you do now? I, I try, I, I, dip, I dip my toe back into it every now and again. I mean, like the, the thing is, it's, um, I, think, I, think, um, I think fashion to a certain degree is quite closed off. You mean, know, they right. kind of like, they like to kind of like, 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 like to work in fashion. They like to find people w within fashion as opposed to kind of dip outside, I think. You know, I mean, th this is what I'm finding anyway. I think it might be different for other people, you know. So right. you have to kind of get to know, get in within the fashion fashion circles to be able to kind of, you know, like to, to take advantage of, of finding more work in, in, in that area. Yeah. yeah. Me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you can't I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, 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 no. For me, it's like I, 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 I was finding it difficult, especially living in Manchester. And like where everything's happening in London or New York, right? You know, is a, is a step away from the, the whole scene. So it was, it was difficult for me to kind of like break in that, that way, really. You mean it? Right. And then, but then again, it's like I, I was I started enjoying doing portraits a lot more anyway. So yeah, exactly. 
I, well, um, I still think I want to make that connection with uh, the woman in Singapore. I'm going to send her a message. I'm going to send you the video about her. And then if something works out, you can get in touch with your Asian agent and tell him to basically he needs to get some influencers in the Asian market to yeah. use your work, whether for portrait or fashion or whatever. And then everyone else will follow them because we know everyone's a lemming. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this is what I was thinking while I'm interviewing you because I'm looking at your studio behind. I've finished with the questions, thank goodness. So I've got everything done. I can see you have Star Wars. I can see like these things are somehow your vision board behind oh, yeah. you. Are they sort of your vision board? Like you look at it and you think about no, things. No, not really. I, I just kind of the things that I just like it and um, right, right. I, I basically I don't, I don't I don't use when I put things up. I don't use them as influence. Right. The, the things that I like to be surrounded by by pretty things that that just the trip that I like really. You know, obviously Star Wars is you know part of my youth really and right. And, you know, being a, a little bit of a nerd, there's always, you know, can't help but liking Star Wars, you know. Yeah. Uh, On the car behind you, recently I saw a painting by uh, Kippenberger, the German artist, and uh, he had a series called the Ford Capri series, I think in the 80s, and that car over there reminds me of the work he did. Oh, right, actually, that's, um, that's, that's, by, Scott, that's by Scott C., um, that's actually um, the Dukes of Hazard, General Lee, which is kind of a, um, you know, because it's General Lee, it's, it's, it's we, we, we're, t we're touching on um, dodgy territory, <laughs> and, you know, like you know, because it's a deep south, isn't it, and stuff like that, you know. Right, right. All so, right. Well, I'm gonna let you go, I guess, but I still like the skull behind you as well because it looks like your number one financial success artist, Damien Hirst's uh, diamond. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I also like the woman who looks like some sort of robot woman to my left, which is your right. Oh. Who's, what's that? Oh, that's Robocop. Rubricom. Robocop. Robocop. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I didn't recognize it. Yeah, but that's it's, Robocop. It's, it's just Robocop without the, it's the poster without the, without the typography. Ah, okay. Now that's something, again, I think that defined, in a way, our generation. Yeah. Even now, uh, anyways. Well, I better let you get back to work. I'm going to somehow start my day. It's July 4th here, so we have a quote-unquote holiday. Well, well, happy Independence Day. <laughs> yes, well, America has a lot going on right now, and, you know, uh, perhaps oh, no. in all the destruction, there can be some rebirth at some point. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping the uh, November, the, um, what, what should we call the it? Primaries, uh, yeah, the primaries, yeah, the midterms, yeah. The midterms, yeah. Ho hopefully that will kind of sort, sort things out a bit more, you know. Well, I try to keep the my politics out of my little son's new project. But for me, it's hard to keep politics out of anything. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and especially I think for people who have children or young children, the idea that you would cross a border and have your children forcibly taken from you is just abhorrent. I mean, only monsters do stuff like that. Absolutely. Or people who've been programmed to have absolutely no heart, no conscience, no, no accounting to a higher source. Anyways, that's all I'm going to say on it right. uh, for now, because God knows I could wax philosophical for the next hour. <laughs> on this. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to listen. You know, I'm, 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 in your, I'm, I'm, I'm on your side of the fence. We'll do it. Uh -huh. offline <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. anyways thank you again and um i'll send you some emails and some messages in a little while as soon as okay. i figure out what i'm doing here okay thank you very much See all right thanks time. again Let's take care of yourself good luck with the work thank you love you bye bye, bye.